Most of us move away from danger, but a small group of people do the opposite. They drive toward it, not for thrill, not for fame, for answers. Among them was a man named Tim Samaras, an engineer, a builder, the kind of person who opens things to see how they work, even if the thing is the sky. With him were his son, Paul, and a close friend and fellow chaser, Carl Jung, three people who understood discipline. No reckless dives, no hero shots, no gambling with the wind. They called their group T-W-I-S-T-E-X, and among storm chasers, that name meant one simple thing, do it the right way. May 31st, 2013. Warm, sticky air. Clouds growing taller by the hour. By late afternoon, a strong storm near El Reno started to spin. Chasers watched from a distance. They checked maps. They planned escape routes. Nothing unusual yet, just a serious storm. When everyone expects it the least, a dark mass touches the ground beneath the storm. Not a thin rope, not a neat cone, it looks like a moving wall. That wall grows, half a mile wide, then more. Later, it will be measured at about 2.6 miles, 4.2 kilometers, across. The widest tornado ever recorded. This was not a tornado that moved in one clean line. It sped up, slowed down, slid sideways, even crossed back on places it had already passed like a tide pushing the shore at an angle. Rain wrapped around it like a curtain. You could be close and still not see the danger in front of you. Smaller spin-ups, little whirlwinds, turned around the big one like gears around a wheel. Even for experts, this was hard to read. At the same time, roads filled up. People were leaving the city. Reporters were live. Chasers tried to stay far and still see. Most tornadoes drift one way and keep drifting. This one didn't. It slid sideways, like a giant shouldering across the fields. And suddenly the safe space on the map got smaller. The roads here run like a checkerboard, north-south, east-west. When a storm changes direction, you change roads. The plan was simple. Drop south to give the storm room then cut east and get out. But it was this time they realized they were simply too close to the tornado and couldn't risk getting sucked in due to its unpredictable path, so they chose to go north and then east again in hopes of surpassing it. On the next east leg, something changed. The sound of the wind changed first, from a steady shove to a deep, rolling push that came in waves. Power poles leaned, a stop sign rattled in its bolts. Grass didn't just bend, it lay down. The rain looked like a gray sheet pulled across the road. Behind that sheet you couldn't see shapes. Not trees, not buildings, not the thing making the wind. They reached the next corner. North should have been the exit, but north was a wall of cars again. They stayed east, one more block. Every block you add is a gamble. Will the storm let you have it? At that same moment, another storm chaser, Dan Robinson, was just ahead of them. By pure chance, his camera was already rolling, pointed straight toward the road behind him. That lens captured something no one expected, the final moments of the Twistex team's car. Right at this moment, you can see the headlights of the Twistex car in the frame. They're falling behind, just a little slower than the flow of traffic ahead. And right behind them, hidden in the curtain of rain, the tornado is moving closer, growing wider and speeding up at a terrifying pace. Until, in just a few heartbeats, the storm swallows them whole. Due to the blurry footage, it's hard to make out exactly what happened in real time. That's why I found this animated reconstruction, which clearly shows how the chase unfolded. Here, you can see the twist X car, the path of the tornado, and how quickly the storm closed the distance, until it swallowed them. I also found a rare clip. 
filmed by an unknown person. By pure chance, they started recording at the exact moment the Twistex team was pulled in. If you look closely, you can even spot their headlights, swallowed by the tornado, twisting violently inside the storm. Right after the tornado lifted, rescue crews spread across the El Reno area. They worked through the flooded roads, overturned cars, and collapsed homes, searching for survivors who had been trapped or forgotten in the wreckage. For hours, they pulled people from twisted vehicles and carried the injured out of debris-strewn fields. In that same search, they came across the remains of the Twistex team. Their Chevy Cobalt had been ripped apart and thrown into open farmland. Tim and his son Paul were found close to the wreck, while Carl Young's body was discovered nearly half a mile away, carried by the violent winds. Eventually, a small memorial was placed in the fields outside El Reno. It bears their names, Tim, Paul, and Carl. For chasers who pass by, it is not just a marker in the ground. It is a reminder of the price that can be paid in the pursuit of knowledge. <laughs>